Our board, uh, since ex its existence 2004, is meeting twice a year, in springtime and in fall. And um, um, we are all working voluntarily. We are not part of the United Nations organizations. We are an advisory board uh, without any budget. Uh, we had to look for sponsors uh, to sponsor our activities and so we always meet in cities where we are invited to. So uh, a country as a UN member is inviting us and uh, this time we have been invited by the Italian government to Milan. Milan because in 2015 uh, will be the World Exposition and uh, the topic is uh, feeding the world and energy security and then we, uh, we have an Italian board member and uh, he made us aware that water is missing. So we thought, yes, this is our mandate, you know, we are advocates, it's our mandate to uh, get others to get water into their agenda. And so we are also a watchdog. If water is missing, then we go there and we say, hey, you, <laughs> you have forgotten water. So it was very productive. The organizers of the Expo Milano were very receptive and they then uh, developed a water strategy which was launched yesterday. So with uh, the cooperation between UNSCAP and uh, the Expo uh, organizers, uh, we managed, uh, and I really applaud them, to have now water as a key topic for the Expo in 2015 in Milan. I'm the Vice Chair of the Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation of the Secretary General. And currently I'm the Acting Chair because uh, our former Chair had to leave. Why is water such a major issue for you? Why it was water was uh, in my before I took my role as a king, I was the chairman of the Secretary General's Advisory Board of Water and Sanitation because mm -hmm. half the world's population does not have access to sanitation, mm -hmm. and almost two billion people don't have access to clean and safe drinking water. Mm -hmm. So is that the biggest crisis in the mankind, in my view? Very difficult to be actively involved, but pa passively I always follow it, and it has my passion. Well, I have to go back uh, to the year of 2000 when the international community decided uh, on the so-called Millennium Development Goals. These are goals which are saying that um, with in the, until the year 2015, poverty should be halved. But there are a number of goals and the goal number seven is the goal on ecology and sustainability and within that goal number seven we have two targets or sub goals which are saying that until the year 2015 the proportion of people who have no access to water and sanitation should be halved on the basis of the numbers of the year 1990. When in 2004 the then Secretary General Kofi Annan looked into the statistics, he realized that on water and sanitation we are not progressing fast enough. So he installed our board. We are about 19, 20 people from all around the world. We are not all water experts, but some are water experts, some are dealing with environment, some are politicians, some are uh, uh, scientists. So he gave us the task to help to accelerate the, the, the pace 
for reaching the goal. Water is, uh, will be one of the, even the most important, uh, limiting, limiting factor for the development of the humanity as well. Even not energy, even not food, but the water, the water. And uh, water is a cross checkpoint. This is a crossing point of many, many other. But uh, if you uh, go back to the history of the humanity, uh, no settlement established in the mountains, no settlement established in the deserts, but by the water on some sea coast, some river bank or lake bank, but water is absolutely necessary for the development of, and even for the life of any person and the humanity as a whole. Now the problem is how to coordinate, how to how say, mitigate the conflicts between sectors, politicians, sometimes between countries, even regions. Let's uh, take as an example Africa, for example. You can understand uh, the difference between uh, sub-African countries, sub-Saharan countries, sorry, and uh, Kenya, South Africa, Maghreb, layer of uh, uh, this north, uh, this uh, at least South Mediterranean or northern coast of uh, Africa. It's very, very different. Absolutely different. And all this depends on availability of water. Uh, water is very important in Asia because uh, in the last second Asia-Pacific summit last week in Chiang Mai, all the ministers, Prime Minister Sri Lanka of Thailand, the Sultan of Brunei, to mention a few, the Prime Minister of Korea and Vietnam, they all say water is life, but water is also the cause of disasters. So we have to have a balance and control the, the inflow of water. Colombia is blessed because we have many mountains and many rivers uh, 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 come from these mountains, but uh, Colombia, like um, Bolivia, Peru, in Latin America, but many other Asian countries, are also suffering with the melting of the glaciers. These countries have glaciers which have been very important, not only for the environmental development, but also for the social and economic development. And these glaciers, due to climate change, are melting. And this is a very, uh, is a big concern for uh, us environmentalists. I started with public utilities and doing engineering, basically, but also with a very social uh, concern because I was very early working together with the Brazilian favelas, which are the, the slums, the shanty towns. And then I, I, I could realize that uh, more than doing engineering, uh, those who work with water and sanitation are doing a very important social uh, work. Uh, bringing dignity and uh, um, uh, conditions uh, for living uh, for everyone. Maybe for Italian or for European, water means only drinking water. But for Japanese or for Asiatic, water means water in the nature. Therefore, when we consider the problem of water, Shortage of water is very important, but at the same time, excess of water is also very important. Excess of, of water, it means the flooding or tsunami and this uh, phenomenon. As a scientist in the water uh, sector, I realize water is critical for environment, for uh, life and for development. And in uh, many parts of the world, you see the problem of water, which can be summed up in three ways. Too much water kills people flooding, 
too little water, drought and death, too dirty water, again, health issues. When it comes to water, you see the goal is to have the proportion of people who have no access to improved water resources. So today we have about 800 million who still have no access to improved water sources. But improved water sources doesn't mean that the quality of water is good. So we are sometimes misguided by uh, the statistic because everybody is saying 800 million have access to safe drinking water. But it's not safe drinking water. It's access to improved water sources. And whether this water is safe or not, it, it, that's another question. So we are, as a board, making also the, co the international community aware that these figures are not really correct. We are not absolutely uh, unaware of the difficulties. On the contrary, we are struggling every single day with all the contradictions and all disputes within the, the, the sector. And we, in the board, we have different visions about many issues. But as a whole, we have been very strong on making the, the, the statements we, we think we, we should make in order to change things. This morning we have discussed how to create some system that could uh, at the same time uh, relate to the, uh, the, the, the tactical aspects of implementing this uh, system uh, on monitoring the results to, to or the goals to have uh, to, to be established uh, beforehand. So uh, some uh, coordination within the UN system is needed in order to have this work plan and to, to be put in place. We all use our experience, our former experience in our life to contribute to the board in such a manner that we can make the best recommendations to the Secretary General for, um, to uh, make recommendations on, on policies, on, on, on water and sanitation. I'm the only biologist in this team, a very prominent, very specialized, very high-level experts, even politicians. You can see here in this uh, staff, uh, uh, former uh, European commissioners, former deputy directors of UNEP, United Nations Organization, former secretary, uh, undersecretary general of UN, etc., etc. But uh, we are three representatives of uh, academic circles. One is uh, Professor Judy Trees. She is uh, experienced and she is director of uh, political sciences related to environment, of course. Uh, the next is uh, Professor Eiko Dada from uh, Kenya. He's a geologist, but uh, it's very large, uh, uh, how say, uh, expertise, uh, especially in groundwater. Me is a biologist, hydrobiologist, that's why I'm leading the department of aquatic ecosystems. And uh, we three of us uh, are trying to, uh, let's say, to turn the uh, to turn the thinking of this expert team uh, to use more knowledge, knowledge, expertise of the science of academic circles when they undertake some political steps or even decisions uh, because uh, <clears throat> without uh, scientific support uh, many of these decisions are uh, compromised. They were all over the world. Uh, uh, big efforts to reach the development goal on water, you know, to have the proportion of people who have no access to uh, improved uh, uh, water sources. But they were all concentrating on the nice side, the clean side of water. So the dirty side of water has been neglected. And uh, I asked myself, how come? Because it is obvious if you are just discharging, you know, uh, the dirty water that comes out of toilets or of the household, this is a source for uh, illness, yeah? 
children who are walking uh, barefoot, you know, go into the slums in Africa or Latin America, these children will get ill because of, of this uh, uh, discharged water. So um, we were saying, let us de-taboo uh, the sanitation topic. And I was very pleased to see that the board and the, our ex-chair, um, we were speaking the language. You know, we were using the words toilet. We were using the words fakes. We were using the words excretas in our public speeches to encourage others to do the same and to de-taboo this topic. Within the past 10 years, we have achieved quite a lot. I can give you an example. In Africa, when the heads of states met in uh, Samasel in Egypt, for the first time in the African Union discussion, they were not discussing conflict or politics. They were talking about water and sustainable development. They were talking about climate change and how things like drought and flooding should be prevented in various countries, which is a great achievement and uh, I think this is due to the focus. They were also talking about reducing defecation, open defecation in, uh, and hygiene in schools, in communities and so forth. So I think we achieved quite a lot by drawing international attention towards the need for clean water and sanitation. Water and sanitation are important in themselves, but uh, it's a cross-cutting issue about dignity, about environment, about public health, about economic development, social development and uh, education. How many million children just lose classes because they are sick of waterborne diseases? How many workers miss uh, a, a work day? because they are sick for waterborne diseases. So it's a cross-cutting issue and uh, it, it excites very much uh, myself and many of us, of course. There has been in Europe some years ago a big discussion whether water should have a cost. When I was Deputy Minister for Development Cooperation in Germany, I went to some African countries and I discussed it with the women on the ground. And I asked them, are you prepared to pay for your water? And they said, of course we do, because with the water that we pay for, we can uh, employ a watchman for our well. And he looks to it that no animal is coming and uh, you know, contaminates our water. And he sees to it that women are not using their private uh, buckets for going into the water well and fetching water, but that they are using the water bucket which is there so they do not contaminate the water. So this was one uh, reason I got and the women told me that since they are paying the water and they have a watchman watching the well, that their children are healthier and they are not uh, missing school so often. So uh, I think th the consciousness has been changed because people know that, of course, the water itself is free, but they the maintenance yeah, of the installations, um, the, uh, the, the examination of the quality is costly. So uh, we, as UNSCAP, as our board, we have been um, um, trying to convince our partners and governments to see that they have a, a mixed tariff system. Yeah? So those who can pay should pay, uh, but also those who cannot pay at all, there should be subsidies. And of course, due to the fact that now uh, the right to, we have the human right to water, like refugees or people in urgent need, they of course should be given water for free. I spent my life in the environmental agency in New York, telling the environmentalists that I was not necessarily the best environmentalist, but I was an expert in finance and that you can make policy, but that the failure of the environmental policy people 
is their failure to understand the monetary, budgetary, and private capital market process. So implementing their policies has been difficult for them because they have never specialized or gained expertise in how to do the financing of it. So I've dedicated my life more to learn and do and teach and transfer those technologies both domestically in the U.S. and internationally uh, through many, many efforts in different countries. Well, in New York State, when I was working in my New York government role, my secretary of the environmental department asked me to do a study of all the environmental infrastructure needs for New York State. In doing that, I touched on water, wastewater, solid waste, hazardous waste, air resources, etc., and discovered that in New York State, there was no one paying for their water on a user fee or tariff base, that they were financing their water by tax base. Therefore, not much progress was made. Second, we were using a grant system developed by our U.S. federal government, which was very inefficient and insufficient to pay for the cost of water. So I developed the framework to develop revenue bonds or the revenue base to support debt because water is not free. Second, we, had a, we are a water-rich state in New York, so our leakage rates unaccounted for unrevenued water was in the 40 to 50 percent range, which is not uncommon in many emerging countries. When people began to have to pay for their water through user charges, they began to conserve. And so the management of the water resource, the quality that was delivered, astronomically improved by an employing a user charge system where people, once they have to pay for something, take care of it. Water has to have a price. There is value for water. A lot of people take it for granted. In fact, I really feel sad when they open the taps and they think it's limitless. They have the right to just disregard the flow of water and waste it. That's the reason why we're starting the wastewater revolution. We want people to reuse, recycle, and reduce the, the wastage of water. Even I remember the crown prince of Japan, who is our honorary president, he said that when he was brushing his teeth, his daughter reminded him that he should conserve water. Um, les journaux canadiens rirent toujours parce que je dis que ça fait dix ans depuis que j'ai pris un bain. Alors, je ne suis pas entré dans un baignoire depuis dix ans. Alors, une fois qu'on commence à réaliser jusqu'à quel point les gens de la terre n'ont pas de l'eau, alors... Je suis très contente avec une douche, mais plus important, euh, j'ai cessé de manger la viande il y a, il y a quatre ans, quatre ou cinq ans, parce que ça, c'est la seule façon par laquelle quelqu'un de l'Ouest peut se joigner avec les demandes mondiales pour l'eau. Parce que si je prends une douche ou non, ça ne fait rien pour quelqu'un en Tanzanie, quelqu'un euh, au Lake Chad. Alors, euh, mais la demande pour la viande pour les choses qui prennent beaucoup de l'eau pour créer. Si nous réduisons nos consommations personnelles sur beaucoup de choses qui coûtent beaucoup de l'eau pour leur production, etc., à ce point-là, vous entrez personnellement dans le marché de l'eau. In the recent years, there have been um, efforts to link the water sector, the energy sector, and the food sector because we have observed that you have good decisions within the energy sector might have negative impacts on the water sector, yeah? Or if you are not taking care of water and its effects on agriculture. Take, for example, biofuels, yeah? Which is using water and so uh, biofuels is not only competing on the soil, but also with water, with the production of food. So we have to see these interlinkages, and that is why our board 
uh, took on board the discussion on the nexus and we would like to enlighten all the actors not only on the, on the international but also on the national uh, level to think interlinked. The nexus approach is a holistic view of water, agriculture and energy mostly because the Millennium Goals when they were first formed tend to be focused a little bit on individual sectors but in reality those sectors intersect and so consequently the move to the Sustainable Development Goals has forced a, a, an evolution of thinking that we have to look at all things together particularly the water, very high consumption of water in the world for agriculture. Energy facilities require a very large amount of water. And then the, what the population needs, the human right for water and sanitation, are intertwined. Alors, le panel qu'on dessus euh, a été un, une étape importante dans la communauté internationale. C'était en 2003. Ce panel a fait le point sur les questions de financement des, euh, des problèmes liés à l'eau. Et le résultat de ce panel a été principalement de montrer que ce n'était pas l'argent qui faisait défaut, mais la bonne gouvernance, c'est-à-dire une bonne organisation des institutions avec des politiques claires, des objectifs euh, réalistes, mais, mais de, aussi de vrais objectifs. Il y a quatre grands problèmes liés à l'eau. Il y a celui des pénuries croissantes d'eau, c'est-à-dire le fait que dans beaucoup d'endroits du monde, pas en France ni en Allemagne, mais dans la majorité des pays, chaque année, les hommes veulent plus d'eau parce qu'ils sont plus nombreux, parce que leur niveau de vie augmente, parce qu'il faut augmenter la production agricole et donc l'irrigation et parce que l'économie se développe. Donc chaque année, c'est plus difficile d'apporter l'eau à ceux qui en ont besoin. Ça, c'est le premier grand problème. Deuxième grand problème, c'est l'accès des populations à l'eau potable. Ce qui n'est pas la même chose, parce que l'eau potable, c'est une eau particulière. Et là, beaucoup de gens sous-estiment les besoins, mais UNSGAB a identifié le fait que plus de 2 milliards de personnes utilisaient chaque jour de l'eau non potable, de l'eau dangereuse. Et j'ai fait l'estimation que probablement la moitié de l'humanité n'avait pas son droit de l'homme à l'eau potable satisfait. La moitié de l'humanité, c'est absolument énorme. Donc c'est un énorme problème, mais les politiques actuelles euh, ne, euh, ne visent pas encore la satisfaction de ce droit de l'homme dans sa totalité. Le troisième grand problème, c'est la pollution des eaux par les activités humaines. Toutes les activités humaines polluent l'eau. Il n'y a rien à faire, c'est comme ça, c'est normal. Mais encore faut-il faire quelque chose pour que cette pollution soit maîtrisée. Jusqu'à aujourd'hui, Il n'y a aucune politique mondiale en matière de gestion des pollutions de l'eau. Mais c'est en train de venir. Le sommet de Rio a décidé. Les gouvernements se sont engagés à mieux collecter les eaux usées, à mieux les traiter et même à les réutiliser autant que possible. C'est ce qu'on appelle l'assainissement, la gestion des eaux usées. Euh, notre conseil, le UNSGAB, Euh, considère que les objectifs euh, mondiaux d'après 2015 devraient incorporer une cible sur la gestion des eaux usées. Et le quatrième grand problème est complètement différent, c'est que l'eau, ce n'est pas simplement un bienfait, c'est aussi dans certains cas un facteur de catastrophe. Euh, les catastrophes liées à l'eau sont très nombreuses et c'est un sujet de préoccupation majeure pour beaucoup de gens et donc pour beaucoup de gouvernements.